Okay, so now <clears throat> working with uh, the, the plate that I got from Jadiation, which is clear, so it's hard to see. But um, this is going to be the first floor. First floor of my controller is power. So first thing I want to do is I want to get the um, the film off of this. And the reason I like clear is not because it's clean and pretty, which it is, but if you need to drill through the plastic, it's really easy to line things up for a template because you just hold it there, flip it over, and you can make your marks so you can see through it. That's just very convenient. Right. Plastic. Throw that in the trash. Now I get the other side. This really is the best part right here. I love peeling the plastic off. Oh, especially when it makes that sound. So I planned this all out in JDation site, and then when I get it at home, I'm not so good at this stuff that it comes out perfect. I always got little things. Oh, this bolt's not gonna fix. So for example, in the power supply, I got number 10 bolts, and they don't fit through the holes very well. So I'm gonna drill the holes out so they fit. All right, so the first thing I'm mounting up is the power supply. Now, uh, I came with these shoes. I already put the shoes on, see that? That way you can mount it from the edges, right? Which is very desirable. And I have the whole set up, so let's see. It's very close that way. I want to give myself room on the sides. So, like this, see this is right up against the wall. And this way, I have a little bit more room, but it'd be handy if I could get myself more. So I'm actually gonna redo the shoes. Change your plans and then you need all new bolts. I always end up getting the wrong thing. The Bolt Depot does me pretty good. I'm flipping these shoes. All right, so let's see how this is. See, now when they line up with the holes, see, I got all this room here, which is nice because I, I need to be able to hook up uh, things to these wires. So now I'm good to connect this. So use Bolt Depot. Again, they send you everything you need. They kind of tweak things up a little bit here and there, so sometimes I need to get some extra ones. So this is the number 10 bolt. See, and I love it. They give you a nice little baggie, tells you what it is. These little locking nuts here. Yep, so that all works. All right, now I have my number 10 washers. I'm going to do I'm going to take number 10 washer, run it down there, and then I'm going to run them up through the holes here. That's one. And you will sit right here on those. Okay, and we pull out another bag from JDation. And they have this tube. Well, it's already cut up. So and then I'm putting the tubing over the post. So that way when I run the nuts down them, I don't have to run them as far. Cut him to the same length. Okay. Zip. Zip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the lock nuts and I'm just gonna run them down the top of this. So that holds the power supply. We'll tighten them up a bit. So the power supply is the best power supply for the size. And I lost one of the nuts. Probably one of the things I saw on the floor. Um, it is a Meanwell LRS 35012. 
And what's wonderful about this is that if it has a problem, it will shut itself down. And this is really overkill. I do all power injection, so for this, I don't need a super duper, I don't need six power supplies. I only need enough to control the to power the controller. But I still like having this there because if I do want to have power running on a couple of parts, I have the option. The other thing that people do is they'll double stack their power supplies. And you'll have another set of another power supply with shoes and you'll set it right on top of this guy. Okay. See that? The next major element for the power is this guy. This is a fuse box. So I like to fuse the inputs between the power supply and the controller, just in case there's a problem, it protects the controller. So normally I'll have a piece of wire that has a fuse embedded in it. But in this case, I have six points for power. Well, I'll have two. And in this case though, I have the two expansion boards. So I have six. So, what I'll do is I'll do all the fuses here. So this is where I will hook it negative up to the power supply. And I'll hook positive up to the power supply, V plus, V minus. And then here are all my V plus connections, right? There's six of them that will run to the, uh, the V1, V2 inputs on the Falcon boards. And then here are my V minuses, right? So I have it all in one place. So here are my fuses. There are 15 amp fuses. Okay, now 15 amp should be more than enough for what I'm doing. Okay, and you just pop them in to each one of these. And if you have a bad fuse, this red light will light up. Just blow up the controller. Like this. See? And while I'm here, and it's easy, I'm going to loosen up these nuts, these bolts. I'm going to use them all. Lock. All right, so we get him where he needs the holes. screws the one way head Washers. One, two, three, four. I also found a back plate for my uh, for my bus bar or whatever you call it. So the idea here is I'll connect a ground wire to this and then anything else I need ground on, specifically these uh, surge protectors, will pull from it. All right. Come on, stop moving. guys uh, that hole number six 32 three and a quarter inch flip it over like that. that a little bit better yes 
All right, let's move on to the surge protectors. These are APC surge protectors. There's one. And I do need the stickers. It's down here I'm going to write nut for network side. Up here I'm going to write device for the device side. Done. This guy, I'm not taking from quite a bit over to the side. Like this. There, and this one, I don't want enough for a cord to get through there, it's the power cord, and I'll hold it in. And that guy will go right there. What we're going to do is we're going to get those stickers. The plate will get the soft-sided things. Well, the Velcro just kind of okay. Velcro is engaged. I have my locking thing, then I have the nut. A lot of money in these controllers. I want to make sure they uh, hold up. Not to mention they're not exactly easy to assemble. Locking nut. Nut. Okay, so now we start looking at wiring. So these guys are going to come back and they're going to connect to this bus. But the wires are a bit long. Let's see, I don't want it to be messy. So I'm going to keep the wires to length. So this one really just needs to be about to here. So we're going to chop off this end. wire cutters so this looks to be about 12 gauge okay strip that looks like it was exactly 12 gauge see that and that's just so when I go to screw that down that's a very connection there it is there's my number number eight volt in the washer okay. All right, so we have a chance of finding him again. So I like to give the wires a little bit of a twist. Then we coax it into the spade. Push it through. See a little bit of wire coming out. And then I got my crimping tool. I just come up here. It's blue. I line it up with the blue. Give it a really good squeeze. So I got that metal to metal contact. And I just feed it into here and connect it to my bus cutter. Right there. That's good. Okay. Put this on 12. Okay, so we got the major components installed. We got the two, we got the fuse box. We got the, uh, <clears throat> got the surge protectors in place. 
We've got the power supply on. So the next thing to do will be to um, wire up the fuse box to the power supply. But we will do that next second.